Welcome to our kitchen counter, the perfect place to enjoy some delicious conversation, all the while sipping on some richly satisfying coffee. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, what are we chatting about this time? Well, Alan Panamino, 9508, suggested that we talk about genuine faith, specifically How can we be genuine in our faith when we have doubts, which, in part, stem from repeating the same sins over and over, which can seem like an abuse of the grace of God? And thank you, Alan Panamino, 9508, for such a wonderful suggestion. Now, it is a big topic. And, you know, I found one that is very, very worthy of our discussing because I find so many who have this exact same question. And, 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 you know, I think that's probably one of the first things we need to recognize. This is the common experience among Christian people. So, authentic faith. Authentic, genuine faith. What is it? Well, as you may know, We look at everything here through the lens of what it means to be a Christian. And you know, I think our definition of this is the perfect explanation of what genuine faith actually is. Now, this is a following of Jesus that involves a relationship with him, leading to studentship from him, leading to a life lived for him, based on everything that he teaches. See, this definition has never, ever been just a bunch of nice-sounding religious words strung together. It is both authentic faith and how growth in that faith actually happens. Now, how I came to see this comes from having worked through some very similar, if not the exact same, doubts myself. See, I also know how frustrating it is to repeat failures. You know, when you ask for forgiveness time and time again, ask God to take away the sin, vow never to do it again, and yet there it is, fallen into once again. So, what I say next does come from having worked through this myself. See, I find that there is a reason Jesus says that unless we come to him like little children, we will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Indeed, a reason that he calls his disciples in John chapter 13, little children, and even that Paul addresses Corinthians as infants in Christ. So, you may be thinking, what is so all-fired important about this idea of our actually being little children? Well, let's start with the idea of being an infant and growing our thoughts from there. So let me ask, What are infants actually good at? They're good at eating, crying, and making a mess all over themselves and everything else, right? That's what they do. That's what we expect from an infant. And you know, it actually takes time for infants to grow both physically and mentally into children. Then it also takes time for children to grow physically and mentally into teenagers, and then even more time for teenagers to mature into grown adults. It takes time to grow. Now, during this growth time, are little children going to get everything right? Let me phrase it this way. Can they be corrected once for a bad behavior and then trusted to never repeat that bad behavior ever again? Yeah, not so much, right? 
and every parent I have ever known has said the exact same thing, with many often wondering if their child has become evil incarnate because they will do the same bad things over and over and over and over, even though they have been disciplined each and every single time. Now, there are two very wonderful things that I have noticed about this. First, these parents never give up on their kids. They never stop loving them, and they never stop disciplining them. Disciplining them? Disciplining them? Hold on. Whew. Hmm. Disciplining. That's all it needed? No shot of coffee. And they never stop forgiving them. Okay? And two, the second point. Eventually, these kids do indeed grow out of these behaviors because of the love, the guidance, and the repeated framework of discipline that their parents provide. Now, if this is the experience of parents and their children, the ones they love, would this be any less true of God when dealing with His children, the ones He loves? Yeah. And even as these children do indeed grow out of the behaviors they are being disciplined about, right, that the parents want them to grow out of, we too, in time, through God's continued working with us, through the repeated framework of the discipline he does provide to his children, to the ones he loves, well, we will indeed grow out of those that we find frustrating as well. Now, yes, we must desire to grow. We must pursue this. But given that, with time, as any child does, we will grow. So give it time. Now, let me clarify. I am not saying that we stop sinning on our own. What I'm saying is, as we grow in Jesus, more and more His love does indeed fill us. And as His love fills us, it changes us. And we begin to desire Jesus and His love more than the temporary self-gratification that sin provides. See, Jesus is the one who removes our sin, even as He is the one through whom we receive forgiveness. Okay, well, in light of this, then, genuine faith is a faith that allows for this growth process, for this training and disciplining process to take place. It is one that allows godly sorrow to lead us to repentance leading then to salvation. And yes, in the context of that passage, the word salvation does indeed mean being restored in their relationship to God. For the ones Paul is speaking to were already believers in Jesus. I mean, he wasn't referring to their first acceptance of Jesus, but being reunited and restored in the relationship they had. And this is very important. A part of genuine faith is genuinely repenting and seeking forgiveness after we have given in to sin. Well, and and the opposite is also true. Faith would be very ingenuous indeed if we did not do this each and every time we stumbled. Yes, the struggle is real, but with true repentance, so are Forgiveness and growth. No, don't expect this to happen overnight. I mean, in the real world, right? You didn't show up in the world on day one and then punch a time clock on day two, right? Give yourself the time to grow spiritually, even as you had no choice but to take time to grow physically. 
it is not a lack of genuine faith that requires growth, you know, no matter how long it takes. What is a lack of faith is only found when you choose not to grow. Also, remember that being tempted is not a sign of a lack of faith. That is just part of life. Temptation is not sin. I mean, even Jesus was tempted, right? But he never sinned. All right. Well, at this point, you may be thinking, okay, well, what are some steps we can take in order to grow in our genuine faith, to progress from infants through all those intervening stages of development into the mature adults we really want to be? Well, I'll tell you what, I am running just a little bit long. So, if you will, bear with me, I will address this in our next session together, in our next chat. But for now, as this is all about a relationship with Jesus, you know, first and foremost, start thinking about steps you might take in order to grow your relationship with Jesus. You know, one ones that will lead you to the point where you can look temptation right in the eye and say, yeah, no, no thanks. And you know, it's okay to ask Jesus for help. He'd be glad to. In fact, in fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Paul shares how no temptation has seized upon us that is not common to other people, right? Nothing's that unique that we go through. And he says, God is indeed faithful. He will not let us be tempted beyond what we can bear. And he will also provide an escape so that we can stand up underneath it. See, Jesus is in this to help you. Ask him to help you grow, to get beyond yourself. All right. Well, until next time, Alan Panamino, 9508. I do hope this has addressed at least some of what you were looking for. And yes, indeed. Next time, we will chat about specific steps we can take in order to help us grow in the genuine faith that we already have. You know, so that our genuine faith can grow stronger and help us say no. Now, as always, please let me know what you think about all this in the comment section. We've had some marvelous conversations, and I look forward to having some with you. You know, conversations where we share the reasons that we think what we do and ask questions for, for clarification from each other. It's a beautiful way to grow in your relationship with Christ, as well as maybe even as friends between you and I. Thank you for doing so. Okay, then. Well, until then, next, uh, please take it easy, take it slow. And make coffee into your cup forever flow. Hmm.